In this video, we'll implement the pendulum example from the 10a video in MATLAB. First, we need to define some system parameters. Let's say the pendulum has a length of 2 meters. We also need to define the gravitational acceleration, g. We need to give the pendulum two initial conditions because it's a second order ODE. One initial condition will be the initial angular position, and the other will be the initial angular velocity. Let's say the initial angular position is pi over 3 radians, and the initial angular velocity is 0. I'll group these two into one column vector to input to ODE45. At the bare minimum, ODE45 requires a starting time and an ending time. If you only supply these two, the algorithm will adaptively pick the sample times and your output time vector probably won't be evenly spaced. However, supplying an entire time vector will force ODE45 to use that instead of picking its own time steps. Let's start the simulation at 0 seconds, increment every 0.1 seconds, and end at 2 pi seconds. Note how I individually coded each piece of the time vector instead of hard coding the numbers straight into this line. This is good practice and makes it easy for me to adjust the time vector in the future. I also made tvec a column vector, notated by this apostrophe, because the inputs and outputs to ODE45 are traditionally column vectors. We can confirm that tvec is in fact a column vector by opening it up in the workspace. Now we can write the ODE we'll input to ODE45. This is z dot from the last video. We said z dot is a two element column vector containing z of 2 in the first spot and negative g over l times sine of z of 1 in the second spot. Review the 10a video if you need a refresher. And now we call ODE45. The code ran without any errors. Before we move on, notice we explicitly gave ODE45 a time vector. Therefore, we are forcing the algorithm to use the sample points contained in the tvec vector instead of letting it pick its own sample times. This means that the output t vector and tvec will be identical. Opening both variables in the workspace will confirm this. We can also do a quick check using the isEqual command. Note that this will return 0, or false, if you made tvec a row vector instead of a column vector. Even if tvec is a row vector, it will still contain the same numerical elements as t, but they technically won't be equal since they don't have the same dimensions. This is why you always have to be keeping track of your dimensions. Since t and tvec are identical, we don't actually need t. We can tell MATLAB to disregard t by replacing it with a tilde.
Still no errors, but now notice that the variable t was removed from the workspace. Now let's plot the results. Recall that our z vector is a two element column vector consisting of theta in the first row and theta dot in the second row. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code. The plot confirms that the initial angular position is pi over 3, or roughly 1, and the initial angular velocity is 0 radians per second. The simulation stops at 2 pi seconds, which is a little over 6. Both curves are sinusoidal, which is consistent with the physics of the pendulum system. Play around with the various parameters to explore how the system changes. I hope you can apply these concepts to the problems we do in this class and in your future classes as well. See you soon.